We have watched a lot of YouTube videos of people who have run marathons without having a very well-structured training schedule, and we've laughed at a lot of them and about how stupid they are. <laughs> and this is me running a marathon with really no training. This week we parked the Airstream in Branson, Missouri, which is only an hour away from Springfield where the marathon is being held. I have wanted to run a marathon since Daniel ran his first. Mostly just to prove the fact that I could totally do it too. This will be my fourth marathon in six weeks. This is gonna cap off my four marathons uh, that I'm doing to bring awareness for cancer research. I've tried a couple times, and by tried, I mean I started training and then injured myself. So I have two torn ligaments in my hips, but in 2019, I signed up to do the New York City Marathon, which is supposed to be on November 1st, 2020, and now is virtual. So I said I was gonna do it. When we got back from Morocco, I started like a traditional training schedule. I was rushing it, did a full 16 miler and felt great about it. And then we moved into the Airstream. And my training went to you know where. Wish me luck. Since the marathon is an hour away from our Airstream and the race starts at 6 a.m., we booked a hotel for the night before the race. It is almost 8 p.m., which means I am less than 12 hours away from intentionally torturing myself. Apparently, the thing that you do as a marathon runner is you lay out your outfit the night before. It's supposed to be in the low 40s tomorrow morning. I'm really nervous about freezing to death. My lovely husband, Daniel, bought me a marathon present. They are these super fancy shoes. If you know much about running, you probably already know what they are. I can't really do them justice. They are supposed to make me less miserable tomorrow because of all that foamy stuff. They're supposed to make me faster, but we know that's not going to be a thing, so it's gonna be just less miserable. It's the morning of the race. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but not like butterflies nervous, just more like, oh my gosh, why did I commit to doing something this stupid? It's gonna be great. Hopefully this will all be over in the next like six hours or so. While I stress the heck out, Daniel is taking this super seriously. All right, since I'm essentially an elite runner, I have a very elite kit that I wear for marathons. And this is of no exception, exception obviously, exception. My brain's not firing yet, it's a little too early. I've got this aerodynamic kit here. This is literally built for speed. This is also doubles as something to keep you warm in cold temperatures. Secondly, because it's cold, you gotta keep your head warm. Boom. Again, elite only gear. You can't buy this online. Shitter was full. <sighs> this is how I'm gonna run the marathon, like a champ. With cousin Eddie by my side, it was time to head to the starting line. We have just arrived at the race. I feel like this is another one of those mornings where Daniel is doing something crazy and I'm tagging along. Except today, I'm doing something crazy and Daniel is tagging along. How are you feeling? Freezing. So it's like 40 something degrees out here. My feet feel like icicles which is fantastic. Right. Looking forward to get moving. I know that the rule is that on your first marathon, you're not supposed to worry about time, you're just supposed to cross the finish line, but I got a little bit of math going. The game plan is to run four miles and then walk one. If I can complete those in like 12 to 15 minutes, then I will complete it somewhere between five and six hours. All 
right, the line is moving. We're getting closer to the river. Walking out to the corral. I'm so glad I get to be here for all of this. Good news. Currently feel like I can keep this space forever. Let's hope that stays up. You heard it here first. She's feeling pretty good. It's like she's gonna crush this thing. Miles are coming easy so far. Look! Look. All right, good news. We're at a mile and a half and my toes are only like slightly frozen now. So that's a win. Cheers! We're gonna stay hydrated because this is a long way to go. We're all like three miles in. Everybody seems really excited for me being this early. How did the morning cream go? Ah, well, shitter was full, but I took care of it. Thank you. So what I've heard is the best thing you can do with a marathon is stick with a plan. My plan is to run four miles, walk one, because what will happen is if I feel amazing at the end, I can skip the walking miles, but you can't take it back. Oh my gosh, this is glorious. Oh. Yay! Beer in a marathon. They're like, they're very sticky. These guys are too cold. Probably. Shitter full. Oh. You're part of the way there. Yeah. This is our first one ever. Yeah. All right, walking is almost over. I'm a little sad about this, but time to run another four. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Thank you. Turning back at this 
We're running through a park now. You feel pretty stiff, but we're only 1.1 miles away from the halfway point. There's ball. <laughs> I'm stretching. Yeah. We're supposed to do this at mile one, and I forgot. I'm getting a little bit nervous now that we're not quite at the halfway point, and then my legs are already sore. But. For doing this. Suck it up, Buttercup. That's what the sound says. I'm feeling like that's a little depressing right now. I feel about a hill. 13. Does that feel good? I'm resorting to walking the hills. We're the halfway mark and have decided this is gonna suck. <laughs> Honey, you look, you look marvelous. Oh, thanks, babe. My legs are feeling pretty tired. Yeah? But I am trying to keep in mind that after this mile, it is only 10 more to go until we're done. Exactly. So we're kind of almost there. I mean, that's we encouraging. See the six mile pacers passed us though a little bit ago, which was kind of sad. Okay, we just hit 16. Therefore, I'm stretching. How you feeling? This is the longest that I had run previously before moving into the Airstream for our training 16 miles. And when was that? At least two and a half months ago. So, I'm in a little bit of pain. Not miserable, but this is kind of what I expected to feel like at like 18, not 16. <sighs> Here we go. All right, we're getting close to mile 17. How you feeling about those hills right about now? The hills are torture. <laughs> like. When we looked at the course, it looked like it was relatively flat. It said it only went up and down like a hundred feet throughout the whole thing. But it didn't say that it was up and down a hundred feet over and over and over again, just back to back. So that's fun. been going so far. All right, in Daniel's words, I'm on the pain train, officially. And it makes me admire him even more for the fact that he would run feeling like this. emotional that we hit the 20 mark. My legs are still on fire, but we only have 6.2 left to go. Like overwhelming. <laughs> but who 
really want to be done. <laughs> 're tough especially after 24 well, 25 how you feeling okay so ready for this to be done but I'm not walking so I'll come in yeah thank you, thank you. Oh, I know right so we're so close Okay, now comes the fun part of the marathon. We're in the last point two, and all we have to do is run through the finish line, which is the most amazing feeling in the world. I'm gonna cry, so just don't judge me. Thanks. Thanks. seconds I completed my very first marathon without training. Yes, I'm in more self-inflicted pain than I've ever been in my life, but all I can think about is how grateful I am for the legs that carried me 26.2 miles, for the incredible man who ran it with me, encouraging and pushing me the whole way, but most of all for the ability to conquer what felt like the impossible. A distance I believe my body wasn't built for with injuries that should have held me back, but I'd chosen not to let them. For me, running a marathon wasn't just about completing a ridiculously long run. It's proof that I'm stronger than I think, and capable of so much more than I often believe. And yes, I got all of that from running a marathon without training. But there's a price to pay for this, no doubt. After much coaxing, Daniel helped me up and we found the truck to head home. I am so excited to be back home at the Airstream. But true story, I'm not sure if I can actually get out of the truck. I have learned though, that there's this convenient little ledge right under the seat. <laughs> you can sit on to like gain leverage <laughs> because I don't think I could be walking normal anytime within the next week. This is what we call the marathon waddle. I know, it's really cute. Said no one ever. I've been told I should avoid stairs today. This is not a good thing. <laughs> I think I might throw it. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> I think I'm coming out for a few days. <laughs> 